So nice to see you all on this special um, Westak uh, day, which uh, actually Westak month uh, would be more appropriate uh, because uh, many different kind of Buddhist countries, places. And time-wise also 2,566 years, which is quite some times or long time. And especially that time, not same like our current time, that time people do not have all kind of these days, one hand global connection. Nowadays we have everything in, in front of us or in, in our hand. So mainly this reason that Buddha Shakyamuni, the time of, you know, the celebration of Vesak uh, uh, Day is differs to place to place, country to countries. Some can, Buddhist countries celebrate one week before like at lunar month or day, uh, where else some Buddhist country or places celebrates today as Vesak day, some celebrate tomorrow as Vesak day. And some celebrates after a month next month. So, you know, we have mainly the two Vesak month or day. One is this month and especially tomorrow, the full moon day, considered as the Vesak day, um, the, the most important Buddhist, Buddhist activities fall on this special Vesak day. Where else, especially Himalayan Buddhist region, uh, or one could say Vajrayana practitioners, they preserve next month full moon as Vesak day. So, however, importance, important here is Buddha's teaching to be recalled, Buddha's Bahagaravi to be remembered. We want, one should commemorate related with Buddha's enlightened activities, Buddha's the teaching, the nectar of the Dharma and the advices and those giving parts, those practices whatever we could or we can, especially on this Vesak day, months, if very good, people, many people, they practice whole month more than normal days or months or years. 
if not a whole month, at least a week. If not, then at least a day that we should put effort to listen to the teachings, read the teachings, meditate, practice as much as possible what we are allowed or that we want once you put effort uh, what is the Vesak and why there are different Vesak days you know um, celebration or or Buddha Jandi or um, Buddha Purnima yes so basically this Buddha Purnima means the full moon day is called Purnima in in Sanskrit or Indian or Nepali you know term and and so Vaishaka is uh, the month, you know, where there's a monsoon season, you know. Uh, so, so simply, uh, we have to know about these days, the significance of this month, these days, and then what and how we should celebrate or commemorate. Usually we celebrate birthday with a cake <laughs> and uh, drinks, food, yes, eat, and maybe a little dance. <laughs> like that way we celebrate, right? But Buddha's uh, Janti, Buddha Janti or Buddha, the Vesak day, should be celebrate something related with virtuous activities. Not so many. I, I gave you just a few examples. The, the most important example, like listening to the Dharma, reading, uh, and then meditation or practice, or you know, the most important part. But beside that, offerings to the triple gems, life releasing, helping others, you know, so many kinds of like, you know, we, uh, how do you say, we, we could do, one could do, you know, it's numerous, it's uh, uh, so many with, uh, Dharma activities, so, so many virtuous deeds that we could engage into, you know, in this special day. So, uh, according to our capacity, conditions, we could engage into Dharma activities, a uh, source of accumulations and purifications, whatever actions, whatever things we do by body, speech, mind, yes, as long as these actions these speech, body, speech, minds, they are used to accumulate merits to purify the negativity. Ah, so they are considered as uh, good commemorations of Buddha's Janti or Vesak Day. So, uh, saying that now Buddha Shakyamuni, as you know, we have so far four Buddha came into this world. In this fortunate, fortunate era, we're going to have thousand Buddhas. So, Buddha Shakyamuni, who came into this world 2,566 years ago, is the fourth Buddha. And then, similarly, 
fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, ten, until thousand Buddhas would come into this fortunate e era. Yeah, important for us to make aspirations that we may also, you know, we are not so bad and not so good according to the time of the Buddha era. Because we did not directly in our present life see the Buddha, but still we we born into the time that Buddha came into this world and his teaching is available. This is good sight. Not so good is we did not born the time of Buddha himself, you know, 2,566 years ago. So there we have bigger chance to attain different kind of realizations, you know. So now, now you, as you know, Buddha born, Buddha before he came into this world, in order to benefit sentient beings, he would choose the best possibility, you know, that would suit for the world, especially human beings, you know. We human beings are very, you know, <laughs> we human beings are very complicated, you know. So in Buddha would, Buddha, in order to come, in order to benefit these complicated human beings, <laughs> Buddha would really, you know, uh, before he, you know, come into this world, he would check thoroughly, like, where to born, in which family, and, and place, and etc. like that. And now what Buddha showed us from these activities of his life or deeds. How many are there? 12 deeds. Yes, his whole his life, if we try to bring into or summarize, there are 12 deeds, 12 main activities. Yes. Example like birth, uh, entering the mother womb, uh, and then studying time like learning arts, and then marrying to the sujata, etc., etc. Like there are twelve men. This and of course the meditating six years under Bodhi tree then attending the enlightenment, state of enlightenment, turning the wheel of Dharma, Parinirvana, uh, uh, passing into Parinirvana, yes, but passing into, uh, yes. So all these 12 deeds, if we, if we are uh, wise, let's say, wise and we are able to use our wisdom or we are able to open up our eyes to see what, what Buddha's these 12 deeds try to give us lesson. So we can learn so much, so many things just from the Buddha's 12 main activities or the 12 deeds. Just out of them, let's say one example. Buddha being a prince, having the full luxury life as a prince or future king. Yet, Buddha 
showed us this luxury life, luxurious life, this fame as king, powerful as king, all has no absolute meaning. They are just subject to change. They are the source of problems, source of sufferings. No one is even free from all age, sickness, sicknesses, birth, cycle of birth and death, so on. Even being a, as a prince or a king. So, we could or we must learn just from these activities tell us so much, many very, very deep meaning are there. So, since human beings, we have capacity to distinguish of uh, what we want and what we do not want. Somehow we have this capacity. But this capacity, if we use properly with the support, with the instrument, with the tools of the wisdom, with the tools of our intelligence, if we use fully, there is a way, there is a possibility to eliminate all kinds of problems and sufferings that we are facing unwantedly, unnecessarily. But now here that all our, these problems comes into being due to, we let secondary uh, power like hatred, anger, jealousy, uh, ego, these kind of emotions, they are not the nature of the mind. All the Buddha's teachings in sutras, in tantras, they are trying to, all the Buddha's teaching, they, they are trying to tell us who we are indeed. We are not, not an angry one. We are, our nature is not a hatred person. Our nature is not an egoist person. These afflicted emotions can be separate from our true nature of mind. So as Buddha gave the teaching on Four Noble Truth. This is now the fundamental of everything. What, what we are doing in the samsara, if we like it, okay, then we don't need to be the teaching there. <laughs> this is enough. 
if we do not like this samsara, if we want to get out of from this samsara, then the next two, you know, the cessation and the and the and the path, you know, are one is causes, one is the result. How we can get out from these samsaric problems? There is a way, there is a possibility. So these, the Four Noble Truth, one is talking about, one is the cause and effect or cause the result of samsara. Suffering, the truth of suffering, yes. And the origin of, the truth of origin of suffering. Suffering comes from where? The karma and clash, you know? Karma and uh, defilement. They are the defilement karma is the origin or the causes. The result, sicknesses, depressions, relation problem, business problem, uh, whatever. Then food poison problems and uh, headache problems. Everything you know in our life. Everything result. The samsaric, every kind of samsaric result. And uh, the cessation. Now the results start from the uh, stream interior, non uh, one time returner, non returner, and arhat, and then. Bodhisattva was uh, first Bhumi, second Bhumi, third Bhumi, fourth Bhumi, fifth Bhumi, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in the sutras. The eleven is the Buddhahood state. And the Tantra, eleven, twelve, up to thirteen. Thirteen is the Buddhahood state. So all kind of these results, you know. So if we want to get out of these samsaric problems, if we are not happy or satisfied with this samsaric attainment, achievement, pleasure, uh, fame, power, money, so and so forth, everything, then there is a way, as Buddha showed us. There is a true way. There is a really a way, possibility. Uh, there's a way to escape, <laughs> let's say. That skate is not uh, only for self or only for oneself. We could use this great possibility for a really meaning of life. What is the meaning that we are human, that we are, we are here in this world so far, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, we, we are in this world, 70 years, up to 70, we are in this world, every one of us. If we really check, if we really look back, what is the meaning of life? If we really look back, only that we may help others and not too much uh, being uh, how do you say? Uh, victim by the defilement, calming our mind, not to let our anger, attachment, jealousy, ego, etc., 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 to let use our body, speech, mind, and then put it into negative actions and compassion. You know, just helping others, just one thing from many others, many, many, many things that our life can be meaningful from the Buddha's teachings. This just helping others' mind, inner, 
in deep nature or in the mind really brings a true satisfaction and that invokes the true naked nature of Buddha. I mean, this is this just helping others can help to directly touch who we are, the true nature of Buddha. So we just spend a one day with that. Out of 20, 30, 50, 60, 70 years. That is that day is meaningful one. If we look back. That meaningful day we can count on where our future designation or design future the plan so as you know with those teachings come i think you may also read or you may also heard no matter as long as i'm practicing the dharma it may take hundred years, thousand years, million years, eons. We are, we, we are very happy. Full kind of determination. So, so, so we, as a Buddhist follower, or we who wish to, you know, become like Buddha, who, who wish to follow the Buddha's uh, like footstep, we shouldn't expect the result in a day or week or years. Yes, of course. If it comes in a day, weeks, months, year, it's good. But if it didn't, each and every day, weeks, months, years, we are in this box of Dharma that we are, as you, maybe Bodhisattvacharya Avatara, like, those teachings talk about how courageous one kind of bodhisattvas in order to benefit whole countless sentient beings. So that kind of courage and that kind of determinations um, meanwhile, it's quite nice to also go to some Buddha's <laughs> Buddha's pure land, <laughs> you know between there <laughs> and between there is also quite quite a, kind of very nice to attend some attainment, you know some city, some uh, some uh, uh, how do you say, uh, resting place. <laughs> but uh, if we look back to our life, how many, how long we spent in this world or this life, the point is, as long as we are using meaningfully, we are living meaningfully, we are doing meaningfully, then it is what to live, what to use, what to put effort, thousand of million or billion years or eons. If it is not meaningful, then if we look back, 
even a single day is not much thing to count on or to bring together with us. Also, we may see bah, what I did there. You know, those days, those years, what kind of fool am I? We all, you know, we are. So now, at least, the, the lights of Buddha's teaching that fortunately we meet, we have chance to read, chance to listen, chance to contemplate, chance to meditate, chance to practice, chance to put into our life. Now, this is the most precious, probably so many lives that we came into this world, this samsara. This is the only life that we could use the most meaningful life ever. It could be the best, it could be the most meaningful. We can really make it. We, we have now in our hand. So, therefore, Buddha's teachings on so many mental disposition of beings starts from the Four Noble Truth, Eight Fold Path, Twelve Interdependent Originations, then to the uh, Pranja Paramita, and then to the all the uh, six perfection to ten perfections practices, the middle way approach, the true truth, uh, five fundamental uh, phenomena, and and the ninth cycle of the Buddha, uh, the how do you say, the old school of the vehicles or three uh, schools of the vehicles, and then the four. Tantras level, all that you know, all these kind of Buddhist teachings that we have chance to. Uh, this is now completely survived. These things survived completely from the time of Buddhas started to give teaching in. Varanasi to uh, Rajgir and all these West Bengal area, then, you know, especially all these teachings kept in those Nalanda University, those Vikramshila University, and then Narendra to Tibet, and then from Tibet now to you. You know, we have everything according to our capacity. According to, according to our mental disposition, we can, we, we have all these jewel, we should wish fulfilling gems, all these that can really bring happiness for self and others. That is not a, a temporary ultimate happiness and that those can help, this can help to reduce our, our sufferings, other sufferings, problems completely from the root of the sufferings, problems. All these are completely from the time of Buddhas, then to, until you, until now to you. As I said, from the India Nalanda University to Tibet, and now Tibet too west and south and east and everywhere and then of course especially focus emphasize on the uh some teachings focused in some part of the world like sri lanka thailand 
Myanmar, Burma, China, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Tibet, Nepal, India, and and then the West, and then the and then the Russia and America were everywhere. You know, now it spread spread to everywhere. Before some teachings focus in more like one part of the country or one part of the world, and some others teaching focus or emphasize into another part of the world. But now everywhere there are access of all these teachings, all these, you know, the nectar of these teachings. So now this is our golden chance. This is our golden opportunity, this life. Now this life can be, you know, we can make this life as our historical in oneself, you know, the history of countless life we came into this world, this samsara, now this life we can make history for ourselves to improve, to develop, you know, to make meaningful life. So, yeah, so on this special Buddha's Vesak day or Buddha Jayanti, I think these are very important, I feel, and then it's okay to feel not so success in our practice. We may not succeed all kind of practices, all kind of you know uh, what we are trying to. Even we are trying to help one has, one friend, we are trying to help one family. We may not succeed. That's okay. But that is not the whole, that's not the, everything of your life. That is one part. You know, failure and success are interdependent originations. So, one side we may fail, but another side we may succeed. So, we shouldn't get depressed or we shouldn't get think that oh my dharma practice is not working because uh, i am not trying to help I, even though i try to help my one friend one family but i i couldn't so we shouldn't shouldn't feel that way you know look at more like widely open up more not narrow sort of like journey of life, open up more wider journey of your life. Make ourselves as trustworthy person for friendship, for, 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 for friends, for family, for colleagues. And not also, that is not also in their eyes. From our side, we be honest, we be sincere, then uh, then people have different kind of uh, perspective. Some may think you are good, some may think you are bad, doesn't matter. That is not the case. From you, your side, you need to be very determined. You need to know what Buddha teachings you are following. You need to be honest, you need to be right. You, need, you shouldn't, from you, your side, you know what motivation you are carrying. If we are carrying not good motivation or not pure motivation, and even though some people see, oh, we are doing very good, that is wrong. If we are carrying very pure motivation, kind motivation, attitude, and then some people will think, oh, you are doing good. Some people will think you are doing not good. So that is not the you know, failure or that is not the case. So important is from our side, we should be honest, we should be sincere. We should know what Buddha teachings we are practicing. And for that, you need support of Buddha Dharma Sangha or three triple gems, Konjosum, triple gems, and or Guru Yidam protectors, three, three roots. Then you are on the right paths. That's how we should uh, know. That's how we should keep the track. 
oh, one Dharma friend, one our family members, one friend is thinking I'm doing not good, one friend saying, uh, if we are too much dependent on these things, then we may not able to practice, uh, we may not able to reach our um, uh, destination of the, our practice. So just study, listen, read. Ah, and read once you uh, make sure that you understand well, make sure that you read well, make sure that you, uh, you, you, you have the, all the, you know, in order to move, in order to practice everything you have, then fully determine, you know? So uh, I think this is important for the practitioners in order to uh, move forward or, or develop our practice, yes? Uh, so important is our we want to be honest, sincere. We we know the best of ourselves. You know the best of yourself. Yes, nobody knows the best who you are. So make the Dharma as your witness. What you are doing, then move forward. Keep the Dharma practice. Keep the meditations. Keep this whatever principle with the teachings that you are able to follow. And that that way we sooner or later we will definitely get results smaller, bigger, whatever. Definitely. So okay, so with this uh, short Dharma sharing with you, talking about Buddha's teachings. So I'm very happy we all are very fortunate to commemorate Buddha's Vesak day. Uh, so, as I said, for morning, one point of one point of the time, whenever you got, whenever you get up, then start. You know, uh, whatever practice you are able to start, and then whole day keep that, and then at the end of the day, you know you. Uh, con con the, the dissolution or conclusion, uh, you know, parts or practice. So I think this way we can also celebrate uh, with us Vesak Day. All right. So wish you all a very, very happy Vesak Day. Uh, may you all be blessed by practicing, not not just reading and not just staying. Yes, but you should implement. That will give you result. That you that will give you the true blessing. Just test it. Test, test one minute. Test little little bite is okay. Practice little little is also good blessing. You know. So, all right. So lots of love and greetings from here.